restaurant. That's it, that's shelter. And then they're going to put you out at a certain time, like 5 o'clock in the morning. You come out of there and from 5 o'clock in the morning, if I have bus fare and, and the means to get around, I go look for a job. I refuse to give up. I even speak to the people amongst me. I talk to them. I'm mean, like, this because you're down. Don't give up. Brush your teeth. You know, comb your hair. Take a shower. You can do that. I do say that to people because I let them know. Don't don't always be so down till you take yourself down. Man, if you if you give up, then it's it's over. It's it's over. Oh no, when the money gone, they're gone. Including the baby mama. She left too. All right, pass me up a lunch for Mr. Toledo, buddy. Got the hand warmers? Yeah. How long you said you've been out here? We came out on the street. I've been out about 12 years. 12 years. In three days, I'll be 45. And what happened to your family? My, my fiance passed away in a house fire and left me an eight year old stepmother. She was her auntie in Toledo. And my mother passed away this February. Wow. So, I'm really out Wow. And my sister, she got breast cancer and colon cancer, and my niece taking care of her. And so, six kids. A lot. And where did you say you're staying? Right now, I'm in the tent. I'm staying right down the street up a learning in the tent. How, how do you stay warm? Blankets. Blankets and candles. By the way, my name is Ron. Hey, Ron. Thank you so much for talking with me. I'm going to say a lot of prayers for you. What's your name? I'm Suwan. Suwan. Suwan, give me one small favor. Yeah. Is it in your heart to spare three more bucks so I'll get some oil gel for my last little teeth I got having pain with? All right. Take care, Ron. I'll come back in a little bit. Okay, Thank you, dear. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Yeah, a couple hand warmers. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Are you guys taking Tommy in April today? I'm going to try. Are they around? They want to go. They want to go. They, they're ready to go. Good, okay. Give me a, a Gordy's lunch. Bye! Hey, buddy. Hello, hey, can baby. I get an extra? Right out here, you can get an extra probably peanut butter. No, I'm saying uh, extra hand warmer. Oh, extra hand warmer. I don't see why not. I don't even have none in this. I don't even have one. Here, now you got two. My man. Right, okay. Stay warm, dear. You take care. See y'all later. <laughs> okay. Good luck to you. Good Thank luck you. to you too. Many blessings. Thank you. Take care of yourself. Okay? Thanks a lot. They didn't buy my contract. Yeah. And so. From there to so much of unemployment till it ran out. Then once it was gone, it was over. Now, temp services, wherever you, I can get in. I basically do. What's the name of the company again? Delphi. Oh, Working good. through General Motors. Making car parts for General Motors. So how do you feel in every day now when you don't have the job and you have all this education? What does it make you feel? I feel discouraged about it, but I don't give up. And I'm not against the fact that Delphi went bang. I'm not against that. It's, it's just that this is the city of Detroit. I'm from Detroit. and and. The hardest blow is to know that I've been, I'm for this city, and yet this, it's the city that's turning their back. That, that's a hard blow. When you know you pay taxes, when you know you voted, when you know you did all of this, and then you got to look at people that's saying, no, I don't, I don't have anything for you. I used to ignore the guys at the gas station. They like, hey, you got any change? I used to ignore them. <laughs> Now you are one of them. Yes. And it's a it's a blow.
So tell me your name, dear. April. How long you been on the streets? Uh, about a year and a half now. A little bit of time. How do you feel about it? Uh, I'm really sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Sometimes you have to get really sick of something to make a change in your life, you know? Exactly. Yeah? Yeah. Where do you stay at in the when it gets dark out? Um, we stay in a, me and my boyfriend stay in an abandoned trolley car. Oh, wow. So at least it's shelter, but there's no heat. But mm. once you get under the blankets, you're all right. Mm. It's just when you get out of the blankets. Yeah. Well, you have someone there with you. Yeah, exactly. Probably. So what got you out of the home that you had been in, the place you were staying, onto the streets? Uh, me and him had an apartment, and then uh, obviously we, had, we let a friend come stay with us, and our friend was hooked on heroin and he convinced us to try it one time so we tried it then we started doing it a couple days a week and then next thing you know it was every day a week and then we lost everything we had our car our apartment and now here we are because a lot of people don't really know what addictions like they think that you can just you know drop it and you're going to be okay but when i don't have it i get sick real sick and they don't understand that. I mean, obviously I went to rehab, but if I go to rehab again and if they can open up their hearts to me and give me another chance and maybe let me do rehab and then come home, I would understand that. Yeah, well at least you did it once. Right. I know you were talking to Larry about doing it again. Mm -hmm. So that may happen. Yes. Maybe soon, maybe before the holidays. Right. That would be a great thing for you to do before next year. Uh-huh. You know, yeah. you can do it. You know, oh. you can. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel when you're out here? I mean, you have this corner that you sit at the same place every day. Mm -hmm. Do you see some of the same people? Oh, yeah. I have some people who are very nice and help me out all the time. I have people who I call my regulars who will get me. Sometimes they even stop and ask, what do you need? I'll bring it for you as like long johns and stuff like that. Then I have other people who give me money and help they can as much most as they can but then there's other people who are just downright mean and say mean things to you when they go by and stuff like that so you have to deal with that every day wow. so how does that affect you when someone says something mean to you and they don't even look at you as a human being right i try to let it go and not let it bother me but some days i have bad days and it really does get to me but i try not to let it get to me because i gotta understand uh they must be in some kind of hurt for them to be so mean to me. They, they must not, there must be something wrong with them. They must be hurting inside to be so rude to another human being who sees me sitting here struggling. Maybe they're going through something in their lives to where they're just downright bitter. So they, they got to be bitter to someone else. And our apartment was in Taylor, Michigan. And did you go to finish school and all that? Mm -hmm. or? And so then after, did you go to college? Some college, yes. I have, uh, I was going to school to get my nursing degree. I got halfway through that, and then I had some setbacks because there was a waiting list to get in the nursing program and this and that. Mm. So I quit going to college and just started working. I worked at UPS for 12 years. I got full benefits, and I got paid good. So. And that was before the drugs? Yes. So then when you got a drug habit, that was the issue that yeah I told them I was going to rehab and my insurance paid for it and everything and then the issue was when I got out of rehab when I didn't have anywhere to go and I was stuck down here I couldn't get from here to UPS mm -hmm. so do you pray about these things I'm just wondering oh yeah every day every day every morning and every night and sometimes in between <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the times I just ask the Lord to forgive me for what I've done in my past and to please let me have a good day and to make it through the day and, and get enough money to where I need to survive and just make sure that and thank him for everything that he's done for me so far that I'm, he's kept me safe and can please continue to do the same and please uh, make sure my family's doing good and my son's doing good. So... Uh -huh. So you have a son, huh? Mm -hmm. From your husband? Mm -hmm. Wow, how old is your son? He's, he just turned one in July. Congratulations. So that's another reason. Mm -hmm. 
He's a little baby. He's staying with my sister right now. So he's waiting for you. He wants you to do this, you know. Well, whatever you do, you do it for yourself, do it for your son, do it for your husband. It'll make a difference in the future, right? right. What's his name? Tommy. He'll never even know this happened to you. Right. He's too young to know what happened to you. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Tell me your name again. April. April. Yes. Such a beautiful name. <laughs> I'm Suan. Suan. Well, maybe you. if I see you out here one day again, I'll stop and talk to you again. Okay. All right. But I think you might be a rehab, so I don't know if I'll see you. Okay, hopefully. <laughs> maybe I'll see you one day when you're when you're doing better. Right. My time for pouting and crying and whining is over. And now it's, it's about a solution. If you stay down and pout out, you, then you, you, you let your circumstances take control of you. What do you say that? What do you mean by that? To believe in God, he said, I will make th all things possible through me. I believe. I don't think nothing in life just come to you. I think you got to get out here and you got to go get it. I do believe in that. Thank you so much, Johnny. I really appreciate it. Maybe I'll see you again. Thank you. Don't be shy. All right, man, we can help you out. Oh, I gotta go find somebody to get out this coat. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. This is my first visual, and I honestly must say I am overwhelmed. Overwhelmed by all of you being here. Overwhelmed by the young people who are making it through. We have to stand together in solidarity against homelessness to give these young people a chance to rise up in success and become who they really are, to be empowered, to be made great. Everyone has a piece of this work, and it truly feels like a movement that together we can do great things, we can end the homelessness, we can have the young people of Detroit become the future, because they are the future, and lead us all forward. We believe that every child has the right to live without fear, unhindered by the threat of rampant drugs, violence, and alcohol. One day, make this world a better place.